Why do you want that? Who are you? What's your name? What are you going to do with that information? You can have it, but it's going to take a long time. It's going to cost you a bundle. Sign here showing you received it. But that's my personal email. I'm sorry. You can't have that. Why? Because I say so. You can't go in there. That meeting's closed. Not. For more than 100 years, Florida has led the nation in open government. Our Constitution and state law says the public is allowed to look at records, attend meetings, and be heard on issues of public policy. The law is clear. Public records are any document, paper, letter, map, book, tape, photograph, film, sound recording, or other material, regardless of physical form or characteristic, made or received in connection with the official business of any agency. That means that even letters you may write to government are public records available to anyone who asks. There's also no age limit. Anyone can ask for records or ask to speak in a public meeting. There are limits to the law. Some meetings can be closed and some documents are not public. But if you are ever told no, you must also be told why. Open government came to Florida in 1889 when the Florida Supreme Court ruled that officials are obligated to keep records of official business. Again in 1909, the state's highest court made it clear that records of government belong to citizens. It happened when a county clerk decided to make some money by charging a firm for the privilege of using his office to compile property record reports. The Supreme Court ruled that the clerk had no authority to charge for services that were his duty. By 1967, Florida was growing quickly and state lawmakers decided they needed to be more specific about open government. The Sunshine Law was quickly passed to secure Florida's place as one of the most open governments in the world. But just because it's the law doesn't always make it so. Sometimes people make mistakes or don't want others to know what they're doing. That's why it's a crime to violate the law. Failing to live up to the law can result in a fine of up to $500 or even a year in jail. Now that we've taken a look at the history of open government laws in Florida, let's discuss some real-world scenarios. At the end of each scenario, we will give you a chance to pause and discuss the questions. We will then continue with possible actions for the scenario. The City Commission is opposed to a particular rock band performing at the local arena. The City Commission schedules a public meeting where it votes to deny the rock band the opportunity to hold a concert at the City Civic Center because their performances are too wild and vulgar and might have a bad influence on the local youth. When some teenagers try to argue that they should have a right to attend the concert, the City Commission threatens to arrest the teenagers for disrupting the meeting. Do the teenagers have a right to speak at the public meeting? Can the Commission arrest the teenagers? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. The teenagers do have a right to be present and be heard. However, agencies can adopt reasonable rules that require orderly behavior during a public meeting. The teenagers cannot be arrested for speaking at a public meeting. Carla is 16 and her parents are finally allowing her to start dating. Tom, a guy she met at the mall, has asked her out. But Tom seems much older than she is and Carla is concerned. So she decides to look up Tom's records online to see if he has a criminal history. Turns out Tom is 21, way too old for Carla to date, and has been arrested several times for felony theft. How else might you use criminal records to learn about someone? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. Because criminal records are available to everyone, you can learn about neighbors, or people you work with, or people who might want a job where you work. The school board is meeting to discuss the possible firing of a high school principal. However, most of the students are opposed to the firing. They think their principal, Mr. Smith, is really cool. A student sees the members of the school board sitting in the conference room and opens the door. The school superintendent says the student can't attend the meeting because of the sensitive nature of the discussion. 
Can they keep the student out? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. School board meetings are open to the public, and the school board should have provided notice that they were having a meeting. Also, a public agency cannot hold a meeting in any facility which discriminates based on age or race. Several middle school students are interested in protecting the environment. They have formed a group that raises awareness of environmental threats to animals caused by human development. They make a public records request to the State Environmental Protection Agency regarding the tests of pollutants in Florida's water. They also request records relating to endangered species in Florida. The agency tells them it will take too long and too much effort to get the records. What can the students do? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. The first thing the students should do is ask that the denial be made in writing. Then they should call the First Amendment Foundation. Their options include filing a complaint with the local state attorney, filing suit in civil court, or mediation through the Office of the Attorney General Open Government Mediation Program. Heidi is trying to decide on a future career. She would like to serve her community, but she would also like to make a lot of money. One day, Heidi meets Mayor Rodriguez and thinks that being mayor may be something she could do. Heidi decides she has to know how much a mayor gets paid first. So Heidi goes to City Hall and asks for records that show how much Mayor Rodriguez gets paid. Heidi is told that she can't have one of the records because that information is in a file that contains exempt information. Can the city deny Heidi's request because the file she has requested contains information that is exempt from public disclosure? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. The city cannot deny Heidi's request. Heidi has the right to view the file. The city may only deny access to records or portions of records if a specific statutory exemption applies. Your family is thinking about moving to a new house. The house is very nice, but it is older. Since you live in a city which owns the electric utility, can you look up electricity use at the house and compare it to your current house or to your neighbor's use? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. Yes, you may find that the house your family is thinking about moving to uses a lot more electricity than your old house or even your neighbor's. Knowing this might make your family decide not to move or at least let them know that the house might need electrical repairs. At a public meeting, a member of the school board suggests the board close several schools to save money. No schools are named, but at the next school board meeting, the board votes to close your school. There has been no public discussion of why your school was chosen. One board member hints at an email that discussed the pros and cons of closing different schools. Do you have a right to see the email? If you wish, please pause the program for discussion. Yes, you can make a public records request for a specific email or all email between school board members. It is a violation of the law for school board members and other public officials to discuss official business such as how they will vote via email. It's just like holding a secret meeting. In this case, because the school board voted to do something that was discussed in private, the action can be overturned and the board would have to have public meetings to discuss school closings. Hi, I'm Charlie Crist. As governor, I have to think about many things before making a decision. As you have just seen, much of the information I and other government officials use making decisions is also available to you as it should be. I think it's extremely important for you to know what your government is doing and why. That's why I have made open government a priority for my office and a priority for everyone who works for state government. I have even created an office of open government to help people more. I hope you have enjoyed and learned from discussing these examples of public records access and the Sunshine Law. Remember, this is your government. Open government is critical to a democratic society and affects people more than they may know. Knowledge of the Sunshine Law and public records access is also important in encouraging civic involvement. When you know what your government is doing, and when your state and local officials know you are watching, 
we all get better government. Thank you and God bless you. Acting as the public's advocate, the First Amendment Foundation provides a variety of services to citizens, government officials, and the media, and stands ready to help any of Florida's citizens with questions or issues related to Florida's Sunshine Law or public records access. If you ever have any questions, please visit our website or contact us in Tallahassee at 1-800-337-3518. The First Amendment Foundation's goal is to educate, train, and provide information to all of Florida's citizens.